Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Principles. Today we're going to be looking at Pareto's Law, also referred to as the 80-20 rule or the Pareto Principle. So let's dive in. The Pareto Principle is this concept that's been used widely in lean manufacturing and lean construction methodologies and in a whole host of businesses. It's a tool that you can use to help you identify certain things that will require some effort, but will give you big returns in response to that effort. It can be thought of in a number of ways. So the third bullet there, the Pareto Principle states that for many outcomes, roughly 80% of the consequences come from 20% of the causes. So if you look at this chart up here, you can kind of see you know, 20% of your time results in 80% of the 80% of the results 80% of time expended 20% of results and where would that apply like how would you think about that well I'm a professor of construction management and so I could easily say that 20% of my students take 80% of my time uh, whatever field you're in like construction is where I think right 20% of my clients in my construction business typically would take 80% of my time. There's ones that require more time and effort. Uh, they need more assistance. Uh, you could also look at it that 20% of your customers make you 80% of your profit. And they may not be the same ones, by the way. So those ones that are taking all your time, maybe not giving you that area of profit. So that could be a way of identifying perhaps some clients that maybe that's not the sector you want to be in or that's not the client that you want to be have. These can be very helpful concepts that way. Sometimes we're spending a lot of our time on things that aren't going to give us the return on that effort. Uh, so it's kind of like in lean construction, we can identify a number of the um, when we think about downtime, the waste areas, right? Defects, uh, overproduction, waiting, non-utilized talent, transportation, inventory, motion, extra processing. These are the eight areas of waste in lean construction and in lean manufacturing for that matter. And so we can look at problems that are coming up on our projects if we do what we call PPC, plan percent complete. Which activities did we expect to get done this week? and which ones did we not end up getting done? Of those ones that we did not get done, from what category are they in? And we would likely see this pattern of certain areas being much more pronounced than other areas. And so that gives us a real clue as to where we should focus our efforts. I mean, we've got some sort of systems problem in this area, so let's see if we can improve the system so that we can reduce the problems in that area. And of course, that'll relate to money as well. You could also do this in a different way. You could also say, what are the most costly issues that are happening during this week? And then sort of look at that. But I think from a systems approach, this would be better because you would be able to identify something, why are we getting so much defects? There's something wrong with our quality assurance, quality control systems. Let's dive into that and let's look how we can improve the system. And that's part of lean thinking, uh, not whose fault is this? Whose fault is this? No, look at the system. What's going on with the system? Is there something that we can do to improve that so that this doesn't keep happening again and again? Can we figure out what the root cause is of this issue? We could use a different tool for that, like the five whys, asking why five times or more to get to the root cause. So Pareto can be really helpful in those instances. I think of it too, you know, when you think about all of the things that you could do to improve your systems or the way you do things, right? Think first, out of all the things, what would give me like a four times return for that effort? You know, if I do this, what gives me like a four times return for that effort? If you can identify those ones, those are the low hanging fruit. Those are the ones that you should go after first so that it gives you that, builds that confidence. It, it really improves things and it gives you confidence to move forward with other things. And then you go down the line from there. So it's a great starting point for identifying what you should go after. Like you can think of it, 20% of your clients take 80% of your profit. 20% of your clients take 80% of your time, as I said. 
Go further down. 20% of your subs take 80% of your time. 20% of your employees take 80% of your time. Maybe you are micromanaging and they're not being able to do things for themselves. So maybe you've got to back off. I've got to spend some extra time training them on this so that they can, they don't need me, right? That's, that's a, a good way of uh, reviewing it. Now, of course, that might take a bit of effort up front, but if it gives you like four times that time back on in perpetuity, then that's a fantastic thing, right? 20% of your investments contribute to 80% of your losses. You know, this is a YouTube video. Well, I can tell you for sure, it's a small amount of videos that I have that lead that actually lead to the most views. And apparently that is something that's very common. So it may not be exactly 2080. It's definitely, I would say a little bit, probably more like 1090, uh, but it's in that zone, 1080, 1090, 2080, 3070. It's in that zone and identifying those things. And what is it about those things that you can replicate? 20% of your activities takes 80% of your time in planning and ex execution. 80% of your clients will return to do business with you. Successful implementation of 20% of your most risky, complex activities lead to 80% of the success on your projects. And I can even look at it in different ways too, uh, from the perspective of a construction project. Usually out of a new construction project, there of all the ones that I've done, there's usually every project I look at it and there's some things that I see more risk in, I don't feel I have the experience in, I uh, think is uh, gonna have some issues. And so it's usually not like, it's, it's a small amount, generally speaking, 20%. Uh, and so that's like a flag for me. All right, flag this. We're gonna put a lot more effort into that. And if we get that rolling really well, our project is gonna roll really well. And that'll be wonderful for us, right? My dad, who was a contractor for many, many years, he didn't know any of this stuff, 2080 Pareto, all that, but he did it intuitively. Every project he would have that structural steel. We've got to get that structural steel right. This is, and put a lot of effort into planning and executing on the structural steel. The other 80% seen his wheelhouse, it's like, not a problem, not a problem, not a problem. But this, got to figure it out, got to manage it really well. And that is helping you to put that focus on it. If you have a new subcontractor, you know, when we say 20% of your subs take 80% of your time, it might be a new subcontractor. They don't know how you work. They don't know your expectations. You might want to spend more time on them making sure that they know how you work as a company. And that will be helpful. So from a safety perspective, from an execution perspective, et cetera. It may be a, a subcontractor that you've had before and for whatever reason you took them again and you know they're kind of a bit problematic, you're gonna spend extra time trying to manage that. You're gonna put some extra contingencies in place to make sure that that flows through. Um, so that's another perspective and everybody has that view. If I'm a subcontractor, I might look at the GCs the same way, just in reverse. 20% of the GCs I work with give me 80% of my problems. Um, you know, I have 80% of my losses from that, et cetera. So you can look at it in many ways and I think you'll find it very, very helpful as a tool to utilize going forward in your careers as a project coordinator, as a site superintendent, as a project management, uh, project manager or consultant. This can be very, very helpful. There's even been a book written on it by Richard Koch. Uh, he wrote an excellent book on that, uh, uh, using it in a gazillion different ways uh, that I've read as well. Gives you some real good sense. But I think, you know what, it's really just getting a sense of it. Don't get too wound up, oh, well, this is like 1090. Well, the fact is, it's a small amount that makes a big difference going either way. It's very rarely that it's 50-50. Um, so think of it that way ease into it, try it on a few things, just observe things and say, okay, I get that. That kind of makes a lot of sense to me. And you'll find that it's a very useful tool for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, click subscribe, check my uh, playlists on the channel. I have many, many more in this particular area as well as many other areas related to construction, project management, leadership, construction, business management, it's planning, scheduling, site management, and MS project. 
I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.